Hi, I'm Tisha Bender, and my book is called Discussion-Based Online Teaching to Enhance Student Learning, Theory, Practice, and Assessment. The first edition I wrote in 2003, and I have recently been updating that, and the second edition is due out in probably the, start, the beginning of June 2012. I basically teach and have taught and have trained teachers in both the online and the hybrid courses. And just to be clear about the distinction, the online course is a course in which it is totally online. There is never, ever an opportunity for the people in the class to meet each other because it takes place entirely online. The hybrid class is a class in which it's got an online component and then will meet and have face-to-face -face time. As soon as the online class started, it was phenomenal. It was, it was just like waiting for really good mail to come in the mail, the post. <laughs> and so I um, instantly loved it. And so one year later at the new school, they asked me to start training other teachers to teach online. And I've been training other teachers to teach online really since 1996, in fact. I've, ta I've trained teachers to teach online effectively at the new school and at NYU, at the SUNY Learning Network, at Cornell, and now at Rutgers. I wrote a weekly column at NYU, and every week I'd write something to do with adapting pedagogy um, to teach effectively online. And then all of a sudden, it seemed to me, I had more than a hundred weekly columns and a friend and colleague of mine at NYU said, wow, you should really get this published. And luckily, I met a publisher and basically thought, oh, I hope I can just put all those weekly columns into a book and that's it. But there was more research to do, but I did a lot of extra research for that and that was how my first book came about. It's a book for any teacher who is new to online teaching that it gives a lot of practical advice, it gives um, a lot of suggestions and a lot of stories. Um, but it's also, and I've heard this from teachers who've used it, uh, it's also good for teachers who have already been teaching online to get some new ideas, or if they come across a particular problem or a situation that they can look in the book and maybe find an answer to that. Basically, it was in three sections. It was theory, it was practice, and it was assessment practice being the biggest part of it. The theory was really about educational theory, about how we learn, how students learn, and then thinking about how that would be adapted in an online setting, with the online setting being that it's text-based and that it is asynchronous. So instead of only just having people read something and then go online and respond to it and talk about it, I thought about various sort of more playful methods of, of having this material be looked at and really studied, because I really think there's a strong link between fun and education, and I think education is a very effective process, and I think the more fun that someone has, the more likely they are to be engaged in their learning and, and have sustained learning take place. So many people have asked the question, is online teaching as good as campus teaching, face-to-face -face teaching? And in my book I say that's not a reasonable question, really, because it's comparing apples and oranges. It's there, we all know, unfortunately, that not every campus class is good, just as not every online class is good. We can't really make comparisons. One of the things that I discuss in the book, in the new edition, the second edition of the book, is really how the social media and all the new digital technologies have had a definite impact on the way that we think and the way that we read and the way that we write. And so the question is, you know, how connected are we? In a sense, we've eradicated that distance factor because we can be connected to anyone all over the world. But at the same time, and this is a really a concern of, of many, many academics, you know, are we connected to the people right next to us, sharing a physical space with us? Are we connected to those people around the dinner table with us? Are we connected to, if we're in a campus classroom, are we connected to the very people either side of us and to the teacher in front of us? Transactional distance is a lot more important than physical distance because really transactional distance means the degree of engagement. So you could have a teacher who is just so engaging that it wouldn't matter if somebody's in the same room as that teacher or someone is con communicating with that teacher electronically from far, far away. 
Because if that engagement is there, then the transactional distance is minimized and the teaching and the communication is very effective. We're surrounded by stimuli all the time. And it's really our choice to be sensible about what it is we want to do. And sometimes it's great to have more than one input from something because maybe that's how we can synthesize and get new ideas and new discoveries. I'm also now very excited. I have a new project that I'm working on where I'm going to be going to China and I'm going to be um, meeting with uh, the Dean and with faculty at Jilin University, which Rutgers has connections with. And I'm also hoping to establish, if I can, connections with Nanjing University. And what I want to do is I want to tra see if teachers in China and those universities there would be interested in going through the online training with me to, teach, to learn how to teach effectively online. And then that they would then team teach online international courses. And I've, just, I've done one myself with a friend and colleague of mine at Jilin University. And so we would offer these courses at Rutgers and um, students at Rutgers just say, oh, that's so cool when they hear about that idea. And so my hope is to have that book also maybe be published in China because China does not yet really have online education. So I'm hoping that that's a market that, that, that where my book might be of some appeal as well.